Hey guys, if you want to become a better archer, better bow hunter, you've came to the right place. I'm Levi Morgan, this is Bow Life Boot Camp, and we're about to dive into everything archery. Hey everybody, welcome to Bow Life Boot Camp. This is the second part of a four week series on target panic. Last week we covered accepting the movement. This week we're covering get your pin on target. Now, a lot of people struggle when they're dealing with target panic about locking away from the spot, locking above, below, beside the spot or the middle, and then trying to swing through and fire at the same time. When I was younger, that's, that was my, that was a story of my life pretty much. I would lock above it and try to drop through the target and fire. I would try coming in from the side, try coming up from the bottom. The problem with me coming from the bottom, I would freeze. I feel like I would pull back. I could aim better coming from the bottom. I think from the resistance, just gravity, but then I would lock just below the target and my bow felt like it would weigh a hundred pounds. Like I just could not get it up in the middle. So the first point being, don't be afraid of the middle. Obviously I know that's easier said than done. I've been through it. Like, yeah, 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 I know, don't be afraid of the middle, but it feels like your bow weighs a thousand pounds. So, what I mean by this is, my dad used to tell me this all the time. He would say, son, are you gonna let that little piece of metal, that little mechanism, determine what you do? He would used to tell me, you are in control, not to release. It doesn't tell you, your sight picture doesn't tell you when you have to fire. You're in control. I'm using um, a little gold tip pierce with a nocturnal in it for kind of an example of what your pin would look like, obviously that being the fiber. So what I'm talking about is, if you come in and you lock high, and you sit and hover high over the, the dot, and then drop in and try to fire as you come by the dot, or even a slow, bam, fire, that's a form of target panic. That's, that's being afraid of the middle. Come up, and you freeze here, and you just can't, and you just finally just try to get it as close as you can and fire the shot. Or I used to try even coming from the side. These are all things that require perfect timing and it's never gonna allow you to be the best archer that you can be. Never gonna allow you to improve past a certain point because you're gonna have flaws. From the time it takes for your mind, when it tells your pen or your finger now to fire, from the time it takes for it to relay that message, you to actually fire the shot, your pen's gonna be here sometimes, your pen's gonna be up here sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you're gonna hit the middle but it's never gonna be a perfect scenario. You're never gonna fire clean shots. You're never gonna consistently get better. So you can't be afraid of putting your pin in the middle and watching it sit in the middle. And I'm gonna try to help you get there because I know right now it seems impossible. The main thing is we have to acquire quickly. There's only a certain amount of time you can stay at full draw and be steady or the steadiest you can be. I have about a four to six second window that my pin, once I acquire the middle, it'll sit there and hover pretty dang good. I mean, it'll sit in the middle where I can fire and execute a shot. After that, it starts to break down, my muscles get tired, everything. So if you're sitting here above the target and you're not acquiring the target and trying to swing into it, you never steady in the middle. So we, the main thing we do, we're not coming in from the top, we're not gonna come in from the bottom anywhere. As soon as you pull back, your pin should go right to the middle. Wherever you pull back at, it should just go straight to the middle. There is no coming in from the top slowly. That, that creates all kinds of anxiety because here, you feel perfectly fine. And the closer that gets, your mind starts going, get ready, get ready, get ready now. I mean, that's what creates that anxiety. So we have to get to where we can acquire quickly. Your pin goes to the middle. You can set, set everything, start executing, accept the movement, boom, your shot will break. Yeah, your groups may be a little bigger at first because you're not timing it, but over time, your pin movement will get smaller, your groups will get smaller, your shots are cleaner, more consistent. You don't have those ginches where you stick one down here or one over here. Those are the things we have to get away from. Lastly, on the points, use a release with movement. And I've talked about this in several seminars. I've heard Nathan Brooks talk about this. I like to think about it as, you know, a lot of us shoot a thumb button or a caliper style release, 
that has no movement in it. It's a hard wall. And I think about it like you're standing on a roof and you have to get to the bottom. You got to get down. And there, the only way when you're shooting uh, something with a hard trigger that just when you, as soon as you apply a little bit of pressure, it's fire. That's like you standing on a roof with no, no way to the ground except jumping. Like it's either you're on the roof or you're on the bottom. No in between. That's why a hinge is such a good release because it has movement. And I like to think of it like having a slide from the top to the bottom. It's a lot easier for you to get on a slide and gradually slide to the bottom. Bottom being the shot breaking, the top being at full draw. Rather than saying, when I apply that amount of pressure, it's firing. So with the hinge, you have some movement. So this is the slide, you're sliding down, you're sliding down and it fires. So it doesn't create that anxiety of that hard wall. You can do that with almost any release. This caliper release I've even set with some movement in it. So put some movement to your release, being my last point, because it's gonna ease your mind of that hard wall. You can even watch this. This has some movement in it. You just want something, you can put a spring on releases. I've taken this TrueFire Synapse and I put a spring on it just to give me that movement. It creates that slide from the top to the bottom, if you can think about it that way, to ease your mind. It's a lot easier to climb on a slide than stand there going, okay, one, two, three, jump. You know, that's what, in reality, that's kind of how your mind is working with a hard trigger. So I got this and it's got a little movement in that spring and it fires. So that's gonna allow you to do all those things. Very important, once again, let's go through them. Starting at the top, don't be afraid of the middle. We have to get where we can get that pin to the middle where you're not locking off target. A huge problem with people shooting archery. Acquire quickly. We are not gonna come in from the top, the bottom, anywhere. We're gonna, as soon as we come to full draw, pin goes to the middle. Use a release with movement, what I just talked about. Get a hinge, put some travel in your release. All those things are gonna help you to create that, that ease into the fire rather than just having a start, stop, hard wall, jump now kind of release. Okay, moving on to the drill. I've only got one drill for this, um, and I call it the reset drill. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your bow, your setup, your arrow, whatever target you want, a block target, a 3D target, Something though, I would, I would rather you do this on something that has an actual spot that you're aiming at rather than just a blank target because that's the whole point of this is being able to aim at a spot. So I would just say using this as an example, let's go to 20 yards, 30 yards, wherever you can shoot, 10 yards, doesn't matter. So we're gonna take your, your release, set it real heavy, and we're gonna pull back and aim in the dot pin goes straight to the middle, but we're not gonna fire a shot. This is called the reset drill. And right now, got plenty of time, off season, middle of season, this is a great drill to work on no matter when, if you're at home practicing, even at tournaments. If I'm feeling some anxiety, I go to the practice range, I'll pull back 20 times. Won't fire, just let down. So I'm gonna pull back, get my pin right to the middle, and just let it sit there. And I already am telling myself, I'm not shooting. I'm not shooting, I'm just aiming. So get your pin to the middle and just work your release a little, but you're not gonna fire it. Then you let down, you reset everything. And not only are you gonna reset each shot, what this is doing is resetting your mind, telling you it's okay for my pin to sit to the middle, in the middle. Just because my pin gets to the middle does not mean, it does not control that I have to fire that shot instantly. Reset drill, pull back, aim. When your shot starts to break down as you're working the release, let down, reset. Just like if you were shooting groups. Pull back, aim in the middle, aim in the middle, aim in the middle, let down. Do this over and over. I don't care if you do it for a month and never fire an arrow. What you're gonna see, when you go back out there, it's gonna retrain your mind, it's gonna reset your thinking. It's okay for my pin to go to the middle. Little bonus here, because it's gonna be hard to stuff all this target panic into four series, so I put a little bonus in this week for breathing. Another thing that can cause you a lot of panic at full draw, holding your breath too soon. I'm not saying to breathe through your shot. Some people shallow breathe, keep their mouth open a little bit and breathe through the shot. I can't do that because I can see it in my pin movement. But 
when you get nervous and a lot of people's breathing just in general, they take their breath as they come to full draw and by the time their pen settles and everything starts executing, they're running out of breath and it causes a, a terrible panic and you want to dump the shot instantly. So it's another thing that can really cause a panic and can cause you to want to force that shot or rush that shot. And the first thing that goes when you hold your breath, the first muscle starts to go is your eyes. So your vision starts to blur, which causes an even bigger panic. So always remember a good breathing system, a routine that you do every shot. Um, because when you get nervous, that's the first thing that you want to change is your breathing. Hold your breath. So what I like to do is come in, anchor. When my pen hits the middle, I'll take about a half a breath and start executing because I only have four to six seconds anyway that my pen's gonna really just lock there and sit very well so I can hold my breath for six seconds. I'm not a free diver or anything, but I can handle that. So always remember to breathe. But this whole, this whole lesson, get your pen on target, is one of the most important you'll ever learn to become a better archer.